What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and today we're going to be doing a video about how I pick an everyday carry firearm, how I deem it uh, reliable, and how I even, where I even start, like how do I decide which firearm I even want to try out, and so on. Also, this is simply how I do it. If you do it differently, I completely get it. Um, if you carry for other reasons, I completely get it. But the number one thing I look for, other than reliability, is the comfort of carry for my lifestyle. So if I'm working, I need a small pocket pistol. If I'm being active, going to the park on a walk, going you know to the kids' playscape, or you know playing outside on rollerblades, playing hockey, whatever, I want something light and something that I'm not even gonna feel is on me basically. And then when I'm going somewhere, you know, like a big mall or you know where I know there's more people and more chance of something happening. Then I like to go with my Glock 26. I can throw a 15 round mag in it. And also I, I change out the Shield Plus every now and then my Glock 19 even though it's a little too big for me. All this stuff is for me. But when it comes down to reliability is their reliability and choosing an everyday carry, it's pretty simple for me. So do I watch videos on YouTube about from people talking about these firearms from owning them? Yes, I do. But that will never um, count for anything, right? I don't buy the firearm and say, okay, this firearm's reliable. So basically, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go to my local range. I hear about some hot new firearm or um, it doesn't even have to be a hot new firearm, just like my FN 503. It's nothing new, but it's special to me because it's it does what it's supposed to. It runs while dirty. It's reliable and it's just a good shooter for its size. Um, but anyways, I like to rent the firearm at the range and test it out because here's the thing. My hands are different from your hands, which is different from this guy's hands and this YouTube channel's hands. Everyone has different hands. Everyone has a different body. So obviously, I want something that's ergonomic to me, right? My FN 503 wasn't the most ergonomic. Threw the whole grip on. This is a Security 9, Ruger Security 9 hole grip. Next thing you know, I have a super ergonomic po pocket pistol that just disappears in my pocket while I work. Um, the Hellcat. It felt pretty reliable to me for how small it is. And... I just like to shoot it. It's a good firearm. People don't realize that when you have a snappy firearm, that doesn't mean it's any slower. It doesn't mean that you can't be good with it. It just means it has a little more pop to it. But sometimes, I don't know if you guys notice this from mag dumping and stuff, um, doing control groups and so on, when you're shooting, even though it pops up, you sort of get a nice rhythm of a bounce. I don't know if you guys notice that, but you know, if you have the same ammo running through the whole mag, you're getting a nice bounce. It's not like a, It's not a terrible thing. Um, and I really like shooting the Hellcat. I really enjoy it. And I even did the test where I shoot the SIG P365X, the Glock 43X, and the Springfield Armory Hellcat all in a line. I shot exactly the same groups with all of them. So you can get good with any firearm, snappy or not. But when it comes to everyday carry, the number one thing you should do is test your firearms, right? Actually, you know, first we're going to get into the tourist and budget firearm things. People... People basically think that I hate on firearm companies. I don't. I just trust firearms in a certain price range, if that makes sense. Because here's the thing. I was in a concealed carry um, defensive pistol class. Someone had like a $2,000 staccato, and it had terrible malfunctions. They had to grab a guide rod and jam that casing out. And all we were doing were simple, simple malfunction drills with empty casings randomly scattered throughout the magazine with regular ammo as well. And so then when you come across a light primer strike, you know, you rack the slide, you know, slap the mag, rack the slide, and, you know, you're good to go. Not the staccato. Staccato had to be removed with a guide rod. Imagine being in some sort of gunfight or self-defense encounter, and you have a jam like that. So I like the ease of use with simple firearms. For instance, the Glock is the way to go for a simple firearm on top of that Glock's handle, um, malfunctions like nothing else. It is very, very easy to clear a malfunction from a Glock. And throughout that whole class with all those casings, I didn't have one issue. I actually brought my Glock 43X once and my Glock 26 on another time. Um, and both had no issues. Obviously, it was a light primer strike because it was just a casing. But then it, my firearm cleared it perfectly, just like it was supposed to. Um, my Taurus GX4, right? So I got it. I was super excited about it. It's very ergonomic. I, very great shooter, all that. But test your firearms, guys. So I got this in. I open the box. And what do I do when I first get a firearm? I start dry firing, right? My first shot, I kid you not, I was so excited for this firearm. I was telling everyone how excited I am because it looked good. It felt good, all that. And then I, my first dry fire practice with it, nothing. 
20 seconds later, the striker goes off. I do it again. 12 seconds later, the striker goes off. Imagine if I didn't test that firearm. Imagine what could happen in a self-defense encounter. Or at the range, you shoot, and you just think nothing's going to happen. So you start to like take down your firearm or whatever, and what happens? Your firearm goes off. It's a super dangerous thing. That is not the only reason I don't carry budget firearms, which we'll get into. But that definitely put you know a little bit of a... It bothered me a little bit, right? Even though Taurus fixed it, my GX4 has been flawless since. Another reason I don't carry budget firearms is because I like to shoot, and I shoot a lot. If I'm putting 200 to 400 or 200 to 500 rounds a week through my firearms, the round counts get pretty high, and I don't trust a budget firearm taking that amount of damage and abuse and stuff like that. I just don't. The problem with budget firearms is you have to cut corners somewhere in order to save that money. In order to give that value and that's that's sort of what happens that's why their QC is you know um, has issues that's why these five work fine these two um, have malfunctions and these three don't even function anymore it's like and I've heard these stories and I've talked to people and I've also talked to gunsmiths I've talked to people that are at firearm stores that sell you a uh, warranty on your firearm right and they said the Taurus is the number one brought back firearm but it's also one of the most popular but the 43x is the most popular um, handgun for the last couple years and you don't hear those getting sent back that's just my point right and so buy once cry once i'd rather buy a 500 dollars glock or 550 dollar fn or 550 dollar hellcat than you know have it run into those budget issues my hellcat has held up my hellcat has ran through everything um, my Glock 26 has run through everything. It's just, th that's what's supposed to happen with these firearms. So that perfect price range to me is somewhere between you know 350 and 400, and about 800 dollars. Through there, you're gonna find you know the HKs, the Sigs, Springfield Armory, FN Glock, all the reliable brands that have built a reputation and a name for themselves fall in that category. Now there's other you know expensive firearms, but you don't need that. You just want a workhorse that you you can abuse. Um, it's gonna get worn down. It's gonna get you know damaged. I mean, look at this. It, it, people always talk down on this firearm because they say, "Oh, the the finish is wearing off." They say it's dirty. Yeah, because I pocket carry and stuff gets in there. I haven't cleaned it yet. Um, but yeah, it's beat up. It, it's all scratched up. That but I've really used this firearm for training, and I just really enjoy this firearm. So I use it a lot, and that's what happens um, with firearms that you carry. So that's another reason why maybe. Okay, don't go as low as a budget firearm, but um, don't go as high as spending a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars on a carry firearm. Um, people do use the saying, "Oh, I want to carry a budget firearm, so if it gets taken away from me in a self-defense encounter, guys, we can always hustle, work extra overtime, bust our butt, do side jobs, cut people's lawns, literally do anything, and buy yourself a new firearm after a situation like that." If they do take it from you, a lot of times they don't. And also with ca certain carry conceal insurance, they will help pay for a new firearm, basically, um, just so you don't have to live with whatever happened with that firearm. Um, but th that's that's bad way of thinking about it. You want a tool that you know is a workhorse. Like I said, my FN 503 doesn't have the best capacity. Um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do anything the best. It's just good, and it runs. The Hellcat, people say it's snappier than the P365. People say they don't like the trigger. My Hellcat runs. It ate everything through the pandemic. Steel ammo, everything. Not a single issue. I was trying to cause malfunctions in a video I posted of my Hellcat, and I just couldn't get it to, and it was frustrating. I'm like, I could probably cause a malfunction by loading mags up a certain way with certain ammo in a lot of firearms. My Hellcat just wouldn't malfunction. It eats everything. So I put, you know, three at the bare minimum, your carry firearm, you should put 300 rounds through it. A lot of companies say that you need a 200, pound, uh, 200 round break in. I know they don't really say that anymore, but they used to. I do 300 because I've had Glock mags malfunction in the first magazine. But then once I hit 300 rounds, I haven't had another malfunction since. Um, you know, and it's just a good way to test. Maybe put 100 rounds of three different kinds of ball ammo. Um, and then you need to test whatever... Um, defensive rounds are going to carry. So if you if you put 200 rounds through a ball ammo, put 100 of hollow points. Or I know that's expensive, so you could do 250 and 50 hollow points, or even just 20 hollow points. Chances are, if it runs all that ball ammo and the hollow points that you're going to use, chances are you're good. But another thing I do is I do put defensive rounds, hollow points, through my firearms at the range about once a month, maybe 
once every two months, right? Just to make sure your firearm is functioning the way it's supposed to. These things take wear and tear when you shoot them. It is what it is. But I like to see at least 200 rounds, bare minimum, through my firearm. I usually do three. And in certain situations, if I have any modifications on the firearm, I go up to 500 before I'm willing to carry it. Because you just never know. I've had issues happen at 400 rounds on an all OEM firearm before. And they were bad issues. So um, that's why, you know, I do stuff like that. But 300 rounds, 200 rounds even, that's fine. Even just run some cheap ball ammo through it. Um, And then one box of hollow points, you know, that'll save money. But you'll know you have a reliable firearm. The problem with a lot of this stuff is people say, you know, the amount of money, right? That's why I say stay in that good, save up the extra $200 and get something that's reputable, well-known, will last a lifetime and has been proven that it lasts lifetimes. Um, I mean, Glocks take so much, you know, so many rounds before they start having issues. It's unbelievable. And so do all these other brands out here. Um, but that's why I like to stay between 350 and 800. That tends to be your workhorses. Nothing special about the firearms, right? But they do everything good, right? Um, I could say that the Glock 26 doesn't do anything exceptional, um, except for every magazine, uh, double stack Glock mag. Um, it takes it, but... It, it does everything good. It conceals good. It carries good. Its shootability is good. Its trigger is not the best, but it's good. Um, just put a connector in it. Um, everything about it's good. It, nothing's great, but it's just a workhorse that I can trust my life with. I've been shooting Glock 26 for a while. It's been my main carry for a long time. I had to stop because of surgery, um, but then I got right back into my Glock 26 and Glock 27. Now, like I said, snappiness. How do I how do I decide what round I choose? Right. Because I do carry my Glock 27 chamber and 40. When I'm carrying my 40, I'm in places where it's going to be up close and personal. Um, places where I'm not going to be in crowds of people. P- places where I feel generally safe unless something were going to happen was going to happen up close and personal with me. So, you know, out walking around in the neighborhood, um, going to the park, you know, whatever. Just simple stuff, right? When I would go to a big place with malls and all these crowds, like I said, Glock 26, just because that is my best shooting handgun, I feel the best with that and I feel confident. Now, let's say you buy the Hellcat, right? And it doesn't fit your hands or you don't like its recoil impulse. Don't be afraid to say, you know what, okay, you know, I I made that mistake. This is why we rent though. You don't wanna end up shooting it. So here's the thing. Sometimes when I'm shooting a firearm, I like it this day and I don't like it this day. I consider that a firearm I don't really like. Um, firearms like the Hellcat, the FN 503, the Glock 26, the Shield Plus, I like them every single day. Every time I feel them and shoot them, I like them. So that's another way you can do it. Go to the range, rent it two different times, see how you like it. Um, spend the $20 to save you a $200 loss in the future, that type of thing. But um, you can't really go wrong with what goes for you, and I can't really tell you what to carry. It's all about your hands, it's all about what you shoot. You notice something? I didn't say anything about capacity, really, except for how I change what I carry based on where I'm going. But that was more about shootability. Um, Capacity isn't the biggest thing to me, but I like to have an everyday carry rotation where I can carry different firearms for different situations. It's usually about five firearms that sit, you know, at the top of my safe. And that's how I, you know, I just go in there whenever I need to swap out. But if you're only, if you can only get one firearm... Um, That's why I like the Glock 26 so much. It is the perfect size for everything. You can still pocket carry it. You can put a 17-round mag, 24-round mag, 33-round mag, 31-round mag, Glock OEM mags that run reliable for home defense if you want. You can also put that flush mag in, um, pocket carry, or even summer carry with that flush mag. Even in a bathing suit in a flush mag because its it's grip is so low. I mean, uh, high sitting, right? Um, So you don't print very easily. There's just... You got to look at your lifestyle first before capacity, in my opinion. Look at how you're living, where you're going, what activities you're doing, and carry accordingly. Like I said, in places where I don't feel like something could really happen, where things could really happen everywhere, but that's why I want something small in in the safest places that I am. Something small, something light that I don't know is on me, but still I can protect myself with. And people have been protecting themselves with single stacks and revolvers for years and years and years. And generally don't have issues generally it's three um shots three second at three feet right and this is definitely capable of it six plus one and i do have the eight round mag so eight plus one nine rounds is more than enough 
In my opinion, generally, my firearms are rocking 10 rounds and above for everyday carry. But for certain situations where I pocket carry, like work, um, like I said, being active, doing a, certain activities where if my shirt goes up, you'll see my firearm. Uh, if I'm jumping around, playing with the kids, then I like to pocket carry and so on. I just like to avoid situations with people where they know I have a firearm on me. Because um, whether it's just they call the police and say, oh, this guy's got a firearm, he's a criminal. Um, I just don't want to deal with that stuff. I don't want to deal with it around my kids. I don't want to have to ple- deal with the police, all that. I just want to keep my life as simple as possible with everyday carry. And then also, I carry according to how I dress, right? I don't dress according to how I carry. So if I only have a holster with you know a, cert- a plastic clip on it that's for a belt, then I can't carry in gym shorts and sweatpants and I can't be comfortable. So I like to get different holsters, maybe two holsters for your firearm, one mainly made for gym shorts and sweatpants and one for with a belt because chances are you're going to alternate between the two if you're like me. So I like to get all of that out of the way, but you don't need to do it right away, right? And all you really need is a decent firearm. And what I mean by decent is does nothing amazing, but everything pretty good. Um, you don't need to add anything special to it. These firearms are great right out of the box. That's why my Hellcat is completely stock. My FN503 stock. Um, you know, I do alter some stuff in my Glocks, but that's a different story. But they are all tend to be pretty good out the box if you stay between $350 um, and $800 with a reputable brand. You put the rounds through it, and then you, ca- you train. You continue to train at that point. You can learn. So if a firearm snappy to you, you can learn to control that firearm, right? Um, but one thing you can't do is with a bigger firearm, you can never shrink it down unless it's something like a, a Glock 26, which you can add and subtract the magazines. You can't really shrink a Glock 45 down. You can't shrink a Glock 17. You can't shrink a P320 compact. But you can put a 15-round mag in this Hellcat. You can put a 33-round mag in the Glock 26, if you get what I'm saying. So I like to st- keep something that is just going to fit If it had to, one firearm could fit my whole entire lifestyle, um, which would be the Glock 26. But as I go progress in my everyday carry journey, I like to have multiple firearms and an everyday carry rotation. Anyways, hope you guys found this information useful. Um, Hopefully it didn't sound like a bunch of rambling. I'm just trying to describe how I do it. I get a lot of crap for my carry firearms. get a lot of crap for the stuff I say. Um, You know, this was a viewer requested video. I was just trying to explain to him. There is no wrong answer. If you like a firearm, if you shoot it well, that's all you need. If it's reliable, if it, if it's meant for your lifestyle and what you do and your activities, then nobody can tell you what firearm you should carry or feel comfortable with. That just doesn't make sense. You may shoot the Hellcat like crap. I might shoot it the best. Um, I might shoot the Sig P320 Compact bad. You you know you might shoot it the best. It, it's just all up to the person. Um, So my videos are mostly just to show you what's out there and then for you guys to go experiment yourself because I can't be there with you and I can't um, be you. I can only be myself with my hands, my body, my ability to stop myself from printing and so on. But anyways, hope this helped. I know it's a long video. If you're still here, thanks for watching.